Man, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you, Rombo, you know, us Niner fans, what we do all day. We go on the 49ers app, we go on these websites, we read these articles. All we've been hearing about is Marquise Good, <laughs> right? When you get out there and you actually see it with your own eyes, you be like, God, am I dreaming? Is this really? It's like, I, I can't even put it into words, man. It's in real life, man. Real life. Marquise Goodwin is going to kill it. Are you listening? Niners! Damn. Oh. Sports representing the Niner Empire Organization worldwide. And I recommend season's almost getting underway. I suggest you do the same thing for further details and information on how to do. Go to the NinerEmpire.com. We're back, ready to take up where we left off with that stupid season ending. Can you imagine? Football season's almost here. <laughs> and the good thing is, we know we're going to compete. No more mopping the street and the floor and the grass and everything else with the 49ers. We are ready. Ready. Ah. No more, you know those conversations where you always get into with people about 49ers? And the words finally come up, but every time the words 49ers come in, in that same sentence you'll hear, they have so many holes. We got that many holes now, don't we? <laughs> hey, I know, I know, I know. I, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, just for the keep it real, guys, I'm gonna say this right now. Okay, the offensive line still is questionable. I know that, but listen. I'd like to say this about that. Could it be the inefficiency of the offensive line? Could it be slightly based on the extreme efficiency of the defensive line? I'm not giving you hyperbole. Or is it hyperbole? <laughs> hey, this defensive line is a defensive line from hell. I'm talking about these guys are crazy good. Look at each and every position that you go down. That is not an average defensive line. So what appears to be a weak offensive line could be the product of a defensive line, or especially offensive line, could be the product of a defensive line devastation. Look at that defensive line. Armstead has come out of a bag who should have came out of last year. Armstead is ferocious this year. Next to him, you got his boy Buckner next to him. Mitchell, who I didn't even know anything about until this year, could be the most dangerous man on the line. And at the big end, <laughs> I bring, boy, let me take it right now. You see, this I warned you about. I told you as soon as we got the 4-3 defense, I warned you about Tank Carradine. Everybody said, oh, Tank's a bust, man. Get him up out here. Listen, listen. Did you see the depth chart? Yeah, yeah, no, no, you see the depth chart. Whose name is first? Yes, it's Tank Carradine. And that's for a reason. Now, yes, Solomon Thomas, he was a little late. He didn't learn all the things he needed to learn. So by default, Tank Carradine is <laughs> in that position. But Tank is playing way above average. And I mean way above. They're harping about him all the time. Tank is like he's back in Florida. He's got a seminal uniform and spirit on. So here's the story. Solomon Thomas is a first round pick. Of course he's gonna have to play. However, he is going to have to take Tank off the spot. They're not just gonna give it to Solomon. Solomon will be packaged up and he'll be thrown out in the field because Zeke Nina says I'm gonna have nothing but fresh bodies out there all the time. Gas, all gas, no brakes. And for that to be the case, it has to be fresh bodies out there with full tanks on every snap. Meanwhile, Solomon's sitting there taking, <laughs> hey, that guy Tank is pretty good, huh? He's gonna have to move him, so that's what I'm saying right now. Wait a minute, Tank Carradine and I, I if I had to make a prediction right now, I'd say Tank might get him out. Swift called it. <laughs> I gave Swift a hard time on Red and Gold <laughs> Radio. Swift thinks he's gonna take it another two, three weeks. I say, and I, you know, I'll tell you, you know what? I'll run this risk. Tank Carradine opens the season, starting at the big end. Solomon is still in packages versus the Panthers. <laughs> this is one of, you know what? This is one of those commitments that I'm saying I'm gonna get myself into trouble. 
but I don't care. I'm going to go ahead and stick with it. Tank starts week one. Bam. Prayers. Donovan Newsom, you know, they had to carry him off the field today on a stretcher. Whew. It was limited at least to a concussion. There's no spinal damage. We can be happy about that, but I'm concerned about his future as a football player, and that's what really worries me. He's going to get by the hospital, realize what's happened. They're going to tell him, listen, you need to take some time off of football. There's his season. You know, it's just a game, right? Donovan comes back next year, gives it another try. Donovan, I, I wish you'd see this like you know my sincerity, bro. Get better, man. We'll be waiting on you next time, next whenever you get ready, we're ready to roll, man. Let me, I'm a, let me go to Cam right now and check out and see what the 49 is going on with you. <laughs> Not a fam, I know what you're thinking. You think I got Tupac or a hologram, don't you? Or Machiavelli. Yeah. <laughs> I hear that all the time. <laughs> what are the other? All the time. I, it's McCarver. <laughs> Better than all of them. What's up, Robbo? McCarver, man. I'm telling you, like I was talking about a few minutes ago, this time last year, we was all pumped up and ready to roll and got our feelings hurt. Yeah. McCarver, this yeah, year. Yeah, we sure did, man. We did, man. I, this year, I got, a, I got a good feeling about this year, man. Man, you keep praying and hoping, man. It, it shall come, man. I'm trying to tell you, man. This is looking lovely, man. Brick by brick. Man. And I tell you right now, too, and the, the 49ers are feeling it too, because they're walking around talking stuff. So you know when that starts, Jeremy Curley's talking about 10-6. Players are saying people better not sleep on us. See that? Man, they at they at practice, man. They feel it. They like, man, this work. And this this is this is easy, man. We we getting this done. You know what I'm saying? They they see it as clear as water, man. <laughs> as clear as water. They look comfortable, making me feel comfortable, man. It's going down this season, man. I'm trying, man. I'm trying to hell y'all, man. <laughs> I got McCarver today because what we were talking about. Carver was at the practice Monday, and I'm collecting observations because yeah. there's nothing more serious than a passionate fan as to give a clear picture of what happened in Carver. Everybody's crying about the offensive line. Oh yeah. Yeah. What did you take in looking at the offensive line? Because this is their second, most of those guys, this is their second year together, and I'm hoping yeah. for better. What, what did you think? Well, you know what? Um, I was actually there on Saturday at the open practice. Oh, you went to and both? And then I went to, I went to both. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I had an observation of, you know, two days. Then I went to the private, uh, I mean, the private uh, uh, training camp practice. Check him out. So, uh, I'll say they're a little bit above average, nothing to worry about. Mm. Um, it's just the defense that we got, man. It's some vicious people, man. <laughs> some vicious pass rushers. You know, so, you know, at first, yeah. what we kept hearing is they just kept running over our offensive line. But, Thank you know, you. they was able to practice. They got to, you know, figure out how to play against them. That's that's basically what happened. But I, I saw the offensive line clicking. I saw them making holes for the running game. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's nothing to really worry about the offensive line. We're going to be all right because I can't see no other team being as vicious as our defense. So for them to practice against them, it's only making them better. And plus, with Brian Hoyer releasing this ball nice and fast to these wide receivers, you know, they ain't going to really have time to get through that offensive line anyway. And that's all I was seeing. You know, that ball coming out quick, quick, quick. So that offensive line, man, it's that – I. You know, it, we, we're going to be all right. It's nothing to worry about. Trust me. Confirmation. I Confirmation. I was just talking about that with Carver. I said, you know what? Has anybody thought about the offensive line is not looking all that good because the defensive line is just fiendish? Thank they you. They vicious, man. Thank you for confirmation. They vicious. Yes. They vicious. They vicious. And that, so everybody's going to look just that's like that. It's only going to make them better. Yeah. It's only going to make them better. So it, it ain't nothing to worry about. And, and Brian Horry, he, he going to be all right. We all know it's all good, and it, you know, only if he stay healthy. Yeah, yeah. But I think he will because he ain't holding on to that ball too long. That ball is gone before you even know it. And these people, you know, these wide receivers doing these crosser routes, man, that ball's gone already, man. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I'm loving about. Marquise Good, that's what I'm talk to me about Marquise about. Good, because you, you already got cleared up about, about Brian Hoyer. And I, I said, you know, Brian Hoyer looks awfully good on TV. Is that just on TV? Is, no, no. McCarver says that's going on in real life, okay? See? Man, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you, Rombo, you know, us Niner fans, what we do all day. We go on the 49ers app. 
We go on these websites, we read these articles. All we've been hearing about is Marquis Good, <laughs> right? When you get out there and you actually see it with your own eyes, you be like, God, am I dreaming? Is this really? It's like, I, I can't even put it into words, man. It's in real life, man. Real life. Marquise Goodwin is going to kill it. He going to kill it, man. I've seen all kind of stuff by this man. Dude. And the beauty about him is it's going to open up the doors for everybody else. But we got skip. Uh, oh, I'm going to tell you one thing. Ron. I'm going to tell you one thing. We have not been hearing a whole lot about Jeremy Curley. Yeah. Yeah. But what I saw on Monday at the training camp, he was doing some things, a whole lot. And I figure that they don't really put his name out there because if you're going to prepare for a team as much, you know, you're only going to focus on the people you hear about all the time. It's sort of like you see through limping out your back pocket. So we already know what Jeremy Curley can do. We just haven't been hearing a whole lot of mm. him. But I know they got plays for him because he was making some plays at that training camp. See. And that's when it started getting into the time where they said we can't have our phones out and stuff. That's when they start busting out with the other stuff ah. that we don't know about. Yeah. See, yeah. Makari, you, you bring up another point too. Now, see, remember last year you had Jackson and Garcon together making Kirk Cousins life easy. Now, Garcon has got another man who may be even faster than Jackson. Could it be? If our boys were giving the ball that fast, could this be another terrible defense, I mean a terrible defensive of nightmare for them to try to stop that duel and then you got Jeremy Curley sweeping in on you? Oh, I see something. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, man. I mean, just, it's, it's too, you could throw them wide receivers out and you can have Juice Check Oh, I coming in making plays. That's him. another person. We already know his skill set, but we haven't heard his name a whole lot as much as, you know, we've been hearing everybody else. But he was doing things, too, out there on Monday. They said linebackers so, can't even cover him. Man, you know what I'm saying? It, it's over with, man. <laughs> it's over with. Like you were saying last year, you know, at this time, basically the only thing we could do is try to dissect what we have and what's the positives out it. You know what I'm saying? But this one is clear, man. This is the blueprint. You know, Kyle Shanahan is a genius, and he got every weapon that he wants. You know, he's going to make it work, man. This this is beautiful, man. And I, to, to be out there and actually see it and, like, really happen, yeah. it was perfect. Brian Hoyer, you know, I was watching him a lot. Dude, that's his team, man. He got control over, over everything, and it's coming natural, man. The ball is just pouring into the receiver's hands so easy he don't even have to try so hard to get that ball to him it's not so high it's not so low it's right to him I've every receiver that i've saw i've seen it in, it's like he got seen it in shock man. i mean i've God seen people lead. running down the field running and especially that post route to the to the sideline i've seen dudes are like and the ball is coming right over the shoulder i said wait a minute is that even yeah. possible I mean, dude, yeah. sitting around the ball just dropped in right in his life. hands. He says, in stride. I said, I, I didn't know he had that kind of skill set. See, I didn't know nothing about he it. I didn't know what people were saying. And people were saying nothing nice about Brian Hoyer. I'm here to tell Dang. those people, listen, don't talk to me how bad Brian Hoyer is anymore. I got Sam McCarvey telling you the same thing. He ain't that kind of bad. To. So, yeah. Sometimes it's just a matter of the people you get with. Yeah. You know, if you in a messed up system I mean, what you gonna do yeah. you know what i'm saying he's perfect i'm gonna, on that note though i'm gonna tell you what what kind of made me upset though is uh matt barkley <laughs> how come well if he has to come in <laughs> with cj bether is is beating him now but if he has to come <laughs> in then we're kind of hoping that these passes get to the receiver <laughs> because i've seen some way up here oh, no. way low or perfect you know what? he ain't there yet he ain't there, but CJ, yeah, yeah, he's gonna beat Matt Barkley. I've heard so. I've heard he's, if they keep Matt at two, I'm gonna be pissed. He's off. moving. <laughs> and I'm just, you maybe you may be able to get happy because I understand CJ's moving up on him really fast too. Yeah. Right. What well, I want to look at the depth chart real quickly. Wide receiver. Well, you know what? We talked about wide receiver so much. I already know what you're feeling on that running backs. See, McCarver, I have issue with the fact that every time I look at everything, he says. Carlos Hyde is number one. Carlos Hyde is number one. But Matt Breda is coming and working his tail off. Reporters and writers are writing about him every day. He can't get no love. 
I'm trying to understand this. You know he's the last guy on the depth chart right now? He's last. He's bringing up ass behind. Uh, Carlos is number one. A uh, high tower, of course, is number two. And then you got Joe Williams, who's... Joe Williams, I'm starting to worry about Joe. Uh, and then you got you got Bibbs. And finally, they mentioned Breda. And I says, that's cold. He's out there outworking everybody. They got to bring him a blast. So what, what, what are you thinking of that? Nah, man, Breda out there kicking ass, man. Like, I've seen it from my own eyes. Especially Saturday, because when they started, you know, scrimmaging a little bit. Yeah. Man, that defense, man, they, they wouldn't let nobody run at first. <laughs> but then all of a sudden, I'm like, who is this dude getting through this line? It was Matt Prater, man. He's, he's out there. He's making a name for himself and getting out there. So they might just got Tim Hightower as number two because, you know, he kind of is familiar with the system. Been around the league. You know what I'm saying? You got to put him in there. He's been yeah. around the league. I'm sure it'll shift, though, once these preseason games come. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we know what's going on in practice, but I'm pretty sure it's going to start shifting once these preseason games start. Man. So Dante Johnson is your number one cornerback. You're feeling on that? Yes. Yes. I've been, I've been wanting him to be that ever since he got on the team because of his height. Yeah. You know, I always wanted a tall receiver, but he was out there doing damage, too. But that's, that's fine with me. That's lovely. Rashard Robinson, Dante Johnson. What can you ask for? Hands for nothing more than that. I tell you, I, I like him too. I wish Akello could come around, but it looks like Akello's gonna take a little bit longer. He's the rookie's rookie, man. Yeah. I saw him out there. <laughs> That's rookie's rookie. It, 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 it says it, it, it all right there. Oh my. It's like he be uh, he, he overdoing it to try to make a play and he just don't. He's he's all in the grass. Why? <laughs> you know. But yeah, he's a rookie's rookie, man. He just need to sit back and learn. I don't expect him to overcome like this season or anything. Plus, you know, he, they hitting his ass at practice. Oh, hard. They're just punishing him. But, just learning. Lo Lorenzo Jerome. I, you know what? Lorenzo Jerome, between you and me, don't let's keep this between us. I have a feeling Lorenzo <laughs> Jerome is, he's going to put Jimmy Ward in, in a little bit of a bind. Because last I heard last week he was running down the field stride for stride with who? Marquise Goodwin. No, hell no. You guys got to be kidding me. But then a reporter wrote it up. I said, I thought he didn't have no speed. You cannot be without speed and keep up with Marquise Goodwin. How do you look at No, how to play him, man. Yeah, then and, and there's certain that. people that just can. Yeah. That's that's just what it is. And what can you do, man? Yeah, absolutely. I wanted him uh in there since Jimmy got hurt. Yeah. You know, that was my next person up, you know. So and he's known for those interceptions as yeah, well. Yeah, so, ball hawking skill. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm yeah. talking about. So why not? Got a feeling he's going to be in there, man. He's, we're going to see him against Kansas City, and I know that's going to be hot. Speaking of which, I can't wait for that game. rival wait. stadiums, McCarver's got, let, let him now explain to you, there happens to be an operation in progress right now because the Houston Texans got a plan. Oh, yeah. McCarver, yeah, yeah. run down. We want everybody to know. I'm going to pass the word as much as I can about people in attendance for the Houston game. All right, so as y'all know, 49ers is playing the Houston Texans this year. So the Niner Empire is, you know, basically putting some things together. Based on the Houston Texans putting an article out saying that they want their fans to wear the red jerseys because the team will be wearing the red jerseys only because when we went to Dallas in 2014, you looked in that stadium, the Empire just flooded that whole stadium. So they don't want that to happen in Houston. So my man Cedric Robinson, the president over at the Houston chapter, wants everybody to wear their black jerseys so we can stand out because it's a lot of us going down there. We want to be able to we want people to be able to turn on that TV and see black all in the state <laughs> since they want to wear red and they got white jerseys. You know what I'm saying? We want to wear black. So that that is the goal. So if y'all going to Houston, please wear your black jerseys, man. We trying to be out there and stand out and let them know that we go everywhere and make everywhere a home field advantage for us. You know, it's Niners all day. Ain't nothing ain't nothing easier than that. Let's do it. <laughs> and you know what? Boy, I tell you what, somebody needs to bring, bring some extra black blankets or something. You know, I just, you know what just I'm saying? yeah. We cannot be out there and not represent <laughs> properly. Oh, man. Yeah. But Carver, that was good all stuff, right. man. I'm, I'm going to count you out. Time for the holla. Three, two, one. Niners! You 
see my screaming and knock the phone down and everything. But hey, man, sometimes it's like that. Popcorn flying everywhere. Sodas is going everywhere. Ice lighting in the sky. We just scored a touchdown. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. My man, McCarver. I love talking football, McCarver. The TTC. And like I told him, this year you will not be crowing. The whole TTC can feel good about not crowing all season long. I mean, think about that last year. We win the first game, 14 games in a row of non-stop crowing. Oh my Lord. Look out, this year they gonna be like that. Y'all get ready, man. Oh, shout out to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm gonna do shout outs about this time in every program, all right? Shout out, and he says, my name is Brian. See him on the comment section. Said, Rob Bo, I've been checking you out for a long time, man. Give me a shout out. Shout out to Brian. <laughs> and oh, I miss my boy Jonas. Jonas' birthday was on the weekend, and sometimes I'm a little slow opening up my mail and catching up my notes, DMs, things like that. That little Jonas, man, I don't like, especially little guys, man. I, I mean, you know, I like kids a lot. Let me give Jonas, let me give Jonas a holler. <clears throat> Jonas! Happy birthday, Jonas! <laughs> I'm gonna get you on the show one of these days, buddy. <clears throat> hey, let me tell you now, one of my favorite things to do on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday is Red and Gold Radio. I'm talking up to an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how many phone calls come in. Non-stop red and gold radio, 49ers, 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 until we get tired. <laughs> and everybody's got something to say. Get involved, get the Rumble Sports, get the Rumble Sports app, it's got all the directions right in there for you. How to hook up, how to connect, and be a part of the program. You'll love it, I guarantee you, I promise you. If you don't like it, you let me know, and I will apologize, but get in there. Looking for you. Oh. And on Saturday, on Sunday, this, this week we've got a special thing. But you know what? Sunday normally we do the same thing. We get everybody online. We talk nothing about 49ers football. I call it the weekend review. Anything that happened during the week, we jump all over it. This week, oh, it's going to be delivered, delivered. Friday night, we got a game with Kansas City. Kansas City. Here we come, Kansas City. So we won't, do it. We won't be doing Red and Gold Radio. We will do the game, the return. Of in your play. <laughs> I always get this turned around. Let me see if I can get this right. I haven't said it in a long time. In your face, at your place, which only makes sense. Friday, the game. And afterward, get together. It's gonna be late night, but it's Friday, fam. We can talk football all night. We just talk about what we saw in the game, what we appreciated, where did we dominate, where were we weak, what can we look forward to in the next game, who are you gonna cut, all that good stuff right after the game, all right? Friday, you ain't got, what's that movie? It's Friday and you ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> Saturday, you can sleep all day. <laughs> I can't wait, man. I'm telling you, I just can't wait Friday the game. <laughs> We've been waiting so long. Hostile competition, we're coming to get him. <laughs> Please, hit like, hit it again. Share, subscribe, love your fam, and looking forward to Friday night. We are back. We are back. We are back. Hey, hey, give me, go ahead, give me a countdown. We are back. 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 We